Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, we'll be learning how to draw lines the right way uh, in vector art. And we'll be learning about paths and objects and the difference between the two. So this is a very important thing to learn. And it's really what sets uh, Inkscape and Illustrator and other vector editors apart from Photoshop, GIMP, and bitmap editors. Uh, so what I mean is, if we grab this freehand tool, which I've cautioned you about using in the past, we can just draw whatever we want, and it creates, kind of, it draws that line. But then if we go back to our selection tool, we notice that this kind of squiggly line that we've drawn behaves similar to different shapes that we drew. We can click it a second time and rotate it around. We can apply some skew to it. If we just click it again, we can just scale and rotate, uh, we can scale it on a single axis. So it's kind of similar to when we drew like our rectangles, right? We can do all the same things to our rectangle. So this is sort of drawing a freehand line, but I cautioned you against it. And the difference between these two things are, one is a path. Well, there's a lot of differences, but this is a path and this is an object. An object has some, is anything that is, I mean, I guess this isn't the real way to define it, but in my mind, an object is something that has predetermined settings in vector art. So a square is a predetermined shape, and so is like a circle. So if we draw the circle here. So this circle has predetermined math to make it much simpler than uh, than just drawing a bunch of than just drawing a line. So what I mean by that is, if we double click very quickly, remember we got these different points. We have a point here that we can determine. Uh, the radius, so the distance from the center of the circle on the y-axis and the distance from the center of the circle on the x-axis. So just off of those two points, using some simple math, you can create a circle. And so with very few instructions, you can tell the computer how to recreate this circle. Um, and then also, even leaving out, even with this part here, uh, it, it's, it's a pretty simple operation to tell the computer, hey, just leave out this certain part of the circle. So uh, create an arc from this distance to this distance and just don't draw the circle in and instead draw a line to the center of the circle here. So I guess what I'm saying is it's much less intensive than if we were to grab the freehand tool and try and draw, draw and recreate this shape. First of all, if we try and do that, it's just not going to look so pretty. We can still make it green and we can try and come up here and change our stroke to make it kind of fat to match that one. The difference is this the thing that we've drawn is a path. Anytime we freehand draw something or when we draw with the Bezier tool like we're going to be using later, it creates a path, not an object. So the way that Inkscape is interpreting this shape that we drew, we can tell by double clicking on it very quickly and we see all these gray dots appear. These are all the different nodes that, it's cr that uh, have been created to tell Inkscape how to recreate this shape. And if we click on this one, if we double click very quickly, or if we just click while we have our, right now it's defaulted into our edit pass by node tool. And so now we can see this is only, we have four different reference points is what uh, Inkscape is being told here. It's saying, draw a circle with this X and this Y and then cut out a radius from this point to this point. So it's much, much simpler which means it uses less space when we're saving our file. It's also what lets us uh, allows us to rescale without losing clarity and without having our object become pixelated. This one we can rescale too and it won't become pixelated, but it is much more intensive because we have all these points. And it's also harder to edit. So if we want to edit this, if we wanted to um, change any point of it, we can zoom in here and see. We can actually move any of these gray dots called nodes. We can move it around and kind of change the shape of this a little bit. But there's so many of them, it'd be tedious to do one by one. Um, and that's kind of why I've, I've cautioned against using the freehand tool. Anytime you, you'd want to use the freehand tool, what you really should be using is the Bezier tool. And we're gonna cover that more in the next video. We'll go over using the Bezier tool. But let's do a little bit quickly here just to show you the basics of it. So I'm gonna left click here on our selection I'll take this, we'll delete this object, we'll delete our square, we'll delete our circle, and we'll even delete this squiggly line that we drew first. So I'm going to click on the Bezier tool, and we're just going to left-click a single point here and a single point here. 
and then I'll just hit the whoa. Uh, I'm gonna hit the escape key. I forgot. So I was doing something earlier, and maybe if, if you played with it, you might be on a different setting. So I'm actually on this Spyro setting, but I want to be on just the regular setting. So make sure you have regular selected, and then we'll do, you probably do by default. Then just left click, come to a different point, and left click again, and hit the Enter key, and we've created a straight line. This is the, the recommended way to create a line in Inkscape or any vector image pro, uh, editing program. I've come to the Selection tool. Now we have this selected. So we can rotate this line around just like we would any other, uh, just like we would an object. Although this is not an object, it's a path. And that a path just means it's made up of nodes and connecting lines between those nodes. So this is a very simple path. If I double click on it, we see we have a node here and a node here. And that's it. That's this entire path. It's creating a path for a line to follow. We can do a little bit more advanced one. If I click on the Bezier tool again, we can click a couple different points and then hit enter. And now we've created a little bit more, tiny bit more advanced path. So we can come here and click edit the nodes of this and we can see, all right, so we've got a node here, a node here, and it's just drawing a straight line between each of them. Now we can do the same thing with our square or, or our, our rectangle tool. If we draw a rectangle, maybe we want to change, maybe we want to, this kind of has four points, right? One, two, three, four. But if we double click on it very quickly, the options we have is round the corners or change the size. We can't move one, one point of it. We don't have these different nodes. That's because this is an object. So we can turn an object into a path in Inkscape, and it's a really important thing to learn how to do. And the way we do it, we just go up to Object, or we go up to Path, I mean, and go Object to Path. So while our square is selected, our rectangle, go to Path, then click Object to Path. Now, the compromise is we can no longer round the corners of this like we, like we could before. If we double click, we don't have that rounded corner option and we can't resize like we like we could before. I mean, we can still resize like this, like we can any drawn thing in Inkscape. But if I double click very quickly, now we have these different points to control. So it's kind of a subtle difference, but now we can make it like a shape like this. So we have four points. This is how you would create this shape in Inkscape if we wanted to, to do that. We can do the same thing. Uh, it's going to get crazy with our circle, but we can do the same thing with our circle. So this, we can go draw it. It's an object right now by default, but if we go path, object to path. Now if we click on this edit, we can see the different nodes of this. Oh, actually, it's not too crazy. Um, what it's done is it's created curved lines, so it only has a few more points than it did before. So now we can change the center point of this, which we couldn't do before. We can change the arc on this by grabbing this it's kind of like a handle so we can grab this we'll learn more about this in the next tutorial about using these handles but every node has a different handle associated with it or has it has these two handles that you can change the arc so it's not just a straight line and then we can create kind of a cool wacky looking shape um, so because it's a because it's now a path so I'd like you to play with that it's really important to learn how to do that how to change an object to a path same thing, if we draw our star, we can kind of control it very quickly, but everything happens, it mirrors. If we want to just create, if we want to just move this one point and keep the rest of it the same, like let's come down here, a time you might use that as like, if you want the point of the star to be taller than the rest of it, we can't do that right now. We can, do, we can stretch the whole thing, or if we double click, we can make all the points more pointy. But if I want to make just this top one really pointy and the rest of them kind of stubby, we have to convert it to a path. So we select it, go to path, and go object to path. And now if we double click, we have every different point we can control separately. So now we control just this and make this one really pointy and the rest we can keep the same. Or we can change the rest around too. In fact, we can change the shape. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. Control Z. We can change the shape to any to a completely different shape altogether. But we lose those options, so we, can no, we can't go back and change the, the corners now like we did when it was an object, we just can't do that. So that's kind of a, a, a quick introduction to paths and objects in Inkscape. 
Uh, it'll come together more in the next uh, video where we talk about using the Bezier tool because it's a it's kind of creates a path and we learn about how to create these arcs uh, and learn about the differences between that. Oh, I guess I will say too that something important. If we want to take this letter, so this is also kind of an object at first. If we zoom in, uh, it's an object. It's a text object, so it has some different parameters. But if we want to, we can actually if we want to edit the shape of this letter, like really get down to it. If we double click right now, the the option is keep typing, right? But if we want to change it, we can also convert this. Go to object to path. And then if we double click, we can edit the shape of this letter individually. So sometimes you'll want to do this, especially if you're creating like a logo out of a certain letter, you can actually kind of come in and create your own kind of thing. Uh, yeah, so that's another uh, option with doing objects to path. So we'll be doing we'll be doing some more cool stuff with this in, in future videos too. Um, hope that's made sense. Go ahead and ask questions, comment below, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.